What's up, everybody? This is Peyton Anderson with Next Level Athletes. I am thrilled to have Dustin Whitaker on the podcast today. Dustin is coming off this past season where he appeared in 26 games, shot over 40% from three, and just recently came off his career high in scoring with 18 against Coastal Carolina. Uh, Dustin, uh, thanks for coming on first off. Man, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Of course. Uh, take me back to your recruitment process. What would you say is most interesting, uh, most challenging about it all? But what would you say led your decision to attend uh, Fresno State? That's a good question, man. Um, probably the most interesting thing about the recruitment process is just be visiting all the different schools and uh, seeing where your work is. Just, uh, that's kind of like one of the biggest things. It's like when you go into these schools, you want to see where you fit in. Not just where they want you, but where do you fit in? So mm -hmm. that was one big thing that's kind of interesting about the process. Something that's more challenging of being able to see where do you really fit in? Because, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's going to tell you what, what you want to hear to get you there. But the main thing is going to be where do you feel like you could be able to stay for the next four four years or more, whatever the case may be. So that's something that it's like you really got to look at. A lot of guys, they go to schools for the name or connections and stuff like that, but not really that factor of where you fit in. And that's something that, I kind of wish I would have took a little bit more consideration into, mm -hmm. but it's something that you live and learn. You live and learn, and that's one big thing with this whole recruitment process is you got to take advantage of is just really seeing through what people are trying to tell you and making sure that the fit is for you. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> take me back to your high school days. You were named All-State uh, and two-time All-Conference League MVP. For your captain, uh, averaged 18 uh, points, five rebounds, two seals, and a block as a senior. Uh, with all that being said, uh, what do you, what would you say you most miss about being in high school in general, but also your favorite memory of all time? Man, shoot, that's a, <laughs> taking me back a little bit. I like yeah. it. Yes, sir. Um, high school days. Oof. I mean, I miss it, man. Those are the days you just had a lot of, lot of freedom. Yeah. A lot of freedom. You're able just to kind of play your brand of basketball. And that was some of the funnest times of my life. I mean, being able to play in high school, but then also playing in the AAU level. That was something where it really elevated my game and took me to another level. So um, when I talk about a favorite memory, that's going to come from AAU for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, 15U. 15, I played in the uh, EYBL, so playing in the Nike circuit is big in itself, but my 15U was my first year going to Peace Jam. I'm not sure if you're aware of Peace Jam, but that's where <laughs> all the top coaches in the yeah. country go. It's one of the biggest AAU tournaments in the, in the country, so being able to play in front of guys like Coach K, Bill Self, Tom Izzo, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't live that down, man. Yeah. Like, that's an experience you ain't going to never forget. Yeah. You're always going to be able to tell that story to your kids. So, I mean, that right there is one of the biggest memories I think I had from my high school days. Uh-huh. And um, uh, when you first arrived at Fresno State, what kind of expectations did you have coming in, like initial thoughts about the program? But additionally, now uh, being in the program for a little bit of time, have the, has your outlook changed on the court at all or off the court? Um. Expectations, you know, coming into the Fresno State, my senior year of high school, I had surgery on my knee. I had dead bone marrow and I had to get that taken out. Mm -hmm. So I was group it in. A little process took me about six to seven months. And coming in, I already knew I wasn't going to play off the jump. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing was going to be are the players going to still rock with me? Is the coaches still going to rock with me the same as they were mm -hmm. when, I, when they were recruiting me? That was my big expectation coming in because I already knew I probably wasn't going to be able to play off the jump. I mean, I'm just coming off, freshly coming off of an injury. I'm still yeah. in rehab while I'm there. It's COVID year. It's a lot of different things that's going on. So I wanted to. Um, well, especially with really, the transfer portal, too. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the transfer. It's, it's a lot of different stuff going on. So mm -hmm. I just have to really make sure that that was right. But um, let's see. What was the other part that you asked with your question? You said expectations. and Yeah. Uh, have they changed at all or yeah, change? I mean, they changed a lot. I mean, I've seen a lot of like I said, coming in at first, you didn't know what the expect like what yeah. it was going to be. It was kind of 
up and down. And throughout the year, this year was kind of up and down to it. It made me think a little bit, but the love is there. Mm-hmm. The love is there. And that's the biggest thing is my expectations stay, stay the same. The love is there. The players still, everyone in our team rocks with each other. We all hang out together. We all yeah. <laughs> chemistry, all team chemistry. chemistry. Yeah. 100. So it's 100. We I, really rock with each other. And that's one thing that <laughs> most teams can't say. A lot, of, mm-hmm. a lot of teams may have clicks or certain guys mess with certain guys. Or, you know how that goes. So yeah. that's one thing I'm blessed to say that we have a group of guys that all really rock with each other. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, going back to what you kind of just said, uh, experiencing multiple setbacks with injury. Uh, first of all, what has yeah. it, what has it been like having to sit out because of injury? But additionally, how have your injuries and setbacks, like I know, I know it always hurts. It's never, it's never fun. But how have they helped you uh, regarding what you might have learned, experienced, or even saw from the on the court from the sideline yeah. that you contribute to your game somehow. So, like you said, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's definitely not easy sitting yeah. out. I mean, it's tough being able to see your guys go out every night and battling and practicing hard. And it's like you're not being able to be a part of that. But mm-hmm. one thing that did help was being able to sit back and you watch him from a different perspective. So now when you're a player and you're sitting back and watching, you're looking at so many different things. Mm-hmm. How's the defense playing? How is the offense playing? How is, how are they guarding this action? How are they doing this? Like you're watching so many different things and you get a better knowledge of the game. Something that really helped me would be watching guys like Isaiah Hill, Anthony Holland, Junior Ballard, guys like that where when I'm watching them and I'm a young younger guy coming in, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm watching them and I'm seeing their pace, their pace of play, the way that they catch and see the floor different things like that where now when you come back and you put those things into play you're a whole different player mm-hmm. so that was one thing that I definitely I honed in on and wanted to make sure that I made sure it was right because when you come back you don't want to be the same you want to be better than what you were so that was something that definitely helped me mm-hmm. and uh, when talking about uh, recruitment like NIL deals like how social media factors in there's a uh... yeah it can, it can uh, get distracting for a lot of guys and it can uh, draw them off their course from their ultimate goal. But for yeah. you personally, uh, what kind of advice do you have any athletes just being able to focus and just kind of keep that tunnel vision and yeah. keep that end goal in mind? Uh, biggest thing I can say about the NIL, man, I mean, it's a blessing, first of all. I would say take advantage of any opportunity that you can if it's available. And make sure you do it the right way legally. Make sure that you get with your uh, people and make sure the deals are all right. But I would be able to say is don't get too caught up, though, because it's definitely something that's new that we haven't seen in quite some time. Mm -hmm. And it could be very sketchy at times where you may get too locked into that making money because that's one thing we all want to make money and being able to make money for our name image likeness is a blessing now, but we all want to make money, but you can't let making money overrule what you're really here to do at the moment. It's playing hoop, it's being able to win, it's being able to do all those different things. So one thing I will be able to say is just stay locked into the main goal. What's your main goal? Your main goal is to go overseas, go to the league. Your main goal is just to make money. I mean, do what your main goal is to do. And make sure that you take that with pride. You do it with pride, too. Because at the end of the day, don't let someone tell you don't take this NIL deal or don't do this NIL deal because you're playing basketball. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> we live in a whole different generation nowadays. So, mm-hmm. you feel me? You got to just do what's best for you. But I will say, don't let it control you. Mm-hmm. And um, when transitioning, transitioning to life uh, off the court, what does a typical day look like for you? Additionally, uh, talk to us about your major. What is it? Uh, what kind of classes are you taking? But more importantly, why you chose it? Yeah, so right now I am actually a MCJ major in mass, it's in uh, media and film. And classes I'm taking right now will probably be um, <laughs> taking some bio classes. I can't stand it. <laughs> I'm taking a bio lab. I got a bio lecture class. I have um, a government class, it's like a GE, and um, some two MCJ classes, MCJ 40 and I think MCJ 1, something like that. But 
all those courses, you know, they helped me because my biggest thing is, <laughs> so let me take you back a little bit. When I first had surgery on my knee coming in to mm -hmm. Fresno, it was a tough time for me because at first I was told I wasn't going to be able to play. Yeah. And that hit me a whole different way. My main goal is to be able to go to the NBA, be able to mm -hmm. go to the G League or overseas or something, be able to play for money. That's my main goal. But when he told me that, it made me look like, how am I going to be able to get paid the same amount of dollars that I would there, just not playing ball? Yeah. So I end up getting into investing and different things like that. And real estate was something that really caught my mind. So when I got when I got to Fresno, I told them, I'm like, I'm doubling down on real estate. Like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And they told me that masking, uh, MCJ would be the best, one of the best courses that they have at our uh, school because it's so, it has so many different varieties inside of it. And there's so many different things that you can do. So I really wanted to learn how to do film. So when I get my properties, I'll be able to take videos of them, do different drone looks, different stuff like that, you know, make it look cool, make it look interactive. So those are just different things that are um, well, my major that I want to do. But um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, talk to us about your own NAL deal. Uh, what is it exactly? Uh, what is it about? And why did you choose it in the first place? <clears throat> yeah, so NIL, I think, I got like a, I did a couple of deals so far. I think I did like maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was Fred Siegel. You know, I got it through Open Doors. Uh, Open Doors has been really huge for us. Uh, you go on there, it shows so many different deals. You kind of go on and just enter your name, mm -hmm. either accept it or decline it. And that's something that um, definitely helped. Definitely helps. Um, was let me see, Fred Siegel. I did Long Jeb. Want something for Wahoos? It's a uh, little restaurant that's right up the way from us. It's uh, they pay good, pretty good money for it. I can't lie. It was a yeah. nice, nice <laughs> little, nice little yeah. deal for sure. And um, I had another little clothing brand and stuff like that. But I'm big into clothes and stuff like that and helping people. So when I see different deals that has fashion and different stuff like that, and I mean, I'm quick to jump on it. I mean, that's that's just what I like. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever you ask someone about their uh, program and what separates them from others, uh, they always have their own opinion and answer. But for you specifically, what kind of a program has Fred State provided to help make them unique? Something that makes Fresno unique is the love. It's the love in the city. That's one thing that I can like. I can say that it's unreal. I mean, you could <laughs> you could be playing like Stephen Curry one night and having the worst game of your life the next night, but mm -hmm. they're gonna treat you like you still Stephen Curry that night. Like that's one thing that, that the city of Fresno is really big on. They love the players. They love all the athletes that come that come to the school. It's just it's a it's genuine best way I could put it is genuine. So when you look at that, I mean, that's places that you want to play. You play your best when you're in environments like that, where even on your worst night, they treat you like you the man. So that's something where it was like, man, that stuck out like a sore thumb to me. And then um, you said what was unique and what was what else? Uh, just what makes them different from any other program. Yeah, what makes them different probably I mean, it's hard. Every program has their has their things, but mm -hmm. something that makes them different, I think, will start with Coach Hudson, uh, the culture that he builds on the defensive end, especially. I mean, we're gonna talk hoop. He is a guru when it comes to defense, and our defense is top in the country for a reason. Mm -hmm. And um, that didn't happen. That didn't happen by surprise. I mean, that we worked all year for it. And that's something that he made sure that we were ready for. Playing in the Mountain West Conference, your defense got to be on point. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get ran out the water. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get ran out the water. You're going to get ran out the water. So that's something that definitely sticks out for sure when, um, when you look at Fresno State, just on the unique side. And, mm -hmm. and um, seeing that you had your first career start recently this season as a sophomore, uh, first of all, what was that experience like? 
but uh, yeah. additionally, uh, talk to us about your most recent start against Coastal Carolina, uh, helping propel the team to win the basketball classic title the other day. What was, what was the experience like uh, scoring your career high? Oh, man, I mean, it was something that was much needed. Uh, all year, you know, it was kind of up and down, and I wasn't getting the time that I may have wanted, but I was always ready for my opportunity. I know just staying in the gym, staying working, I knew when that time came, I was going to take full advantage of it. So when we had guys that were injured that were um, playing big minutes and coaches looking down our bench like, you know, who's going to be that next guy up? I'm like, man, it's my time. Yeah. <laughs> This is the time I've been working yeah. for. This is where all them hours came in for. So when that um just that mindset going into that game was like, man, I'm about to tear this up. Mm -hmm. Make the best of this opportunity. I mean, at the last two games that I started, we played very well. I shot the ball well. And that just really carried on into tonight. It was just like, you know what? Hey, you about to rock this out. You know what you do. Trust your work. Trust your mechanics. And everything else is going to play out. And that's what it did. So, you know, just staying ready for the opportunity is the biggest thing I could say was my like, biggest focus going into this whole classic and the Coastal Carolina game was just staying focused and staying ready. Mm -hmm. And um, for everyone in life, you ask them who, what, who are, what group of people means most to them? Who's their biggest yeah. supporters? Uh, for you personally, who is that for you? And if they were to be listening, uh, what would you have to say? That's my family for sure. 100%. I mean, it's going to start there. Without them, I wouldn't be in the place that I am today. Um, the advice that they give me on a day-to-day, -day, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Being 40 hours away from home is not easy. Mm -hmm. Definitely not the easiest thing, especially when you're a family-oriented person. So just the advice that they give me day-to-day, -day, just staying positive, staying prayerful, and just taking everything as a blessing, not – looking down on anything that you have, like, yeah, like, if I look back into the season, like, I didn't have the, I didn't get a chance to play the most that I wanted to, but they always told me, you being in this position is a blessing in itself. You being able to play college basketball, Division One basketball is a blessing in itself. Not many people could be able to say they could do that. So when you start looking back at things as small victories, you start seeing things in a different light. And that's something that my family definitely, I mean, they do that. They're really big on that, and I can't thank them enough for that. Mm -hmm. And um, in the grand scheme of things, uh, what are you most looking forward to accomplish and be able to get done, uh, whether that be on the court or even off the court with your time left at Fresno State? Can you say that question one more time for me? Uh, what are you most looking forward to accomplish or get done on the court or off the court with your time left? Yeah, um, I could start on the court. I mean, at Fresno State, man, I just want to be able to get to the national championship. When, first of all, win the conference. You can't go to the national without winning the conference. Well, I want to win the championship first. I mean, being able to win a Mountain West conference is, man, that would be surreal. Looking back at all the years growing up, watching teams like San Diego State and different teams like that, it's like, man, I want to be there. I want to mm -hmm. be there. I got to be there. And now it's like you're here. I want to be able to have some, bring some hardware back from it. Yeah. So that for sure. And um, man, hey, you kind of got me on this question, but that for sure, man. That 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 for sure. I definitely will say. Mm -hmm. And um, last question. Uh, how do you want to be remembered most by others? Uh, when your collegiate career comes to an end, whether that also be focused on uh what you did on the court, off the court, or just both. Um, I want people just to look at me for the person that I am. Very energetic guy. Very, uh, man, very passionate, uh, very loving. So when it comes down to that, I mean, I'm looking at it as I just want people to look at me for that. Look at me for the love that I gave to the game, love that I have for the fans, love that I have for the staff. I mean, just everything. Um, I don't want that to go unnoticed. I definitely want people to know the real person I am. I'm not just a basketball player. I'm more than that. And um, I want to be able to use my voice at Fresno State to be able to carry me on later on in life. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, Destin Whitaker, Fresno State guard. Destin, really appreciate you coming on today and wish you nothing but the best with your future, man.
Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you.